and welcome to the Meister Task tutorial, working with sections and tags. As with most things in life, there's not one right or wrong way to organize your project board, but your section and tag system can have a huge impact on your productivity and make the difference between an efficient workflow and a cluttered mess. There are basically two distinct ways you can set up your project boards in Meister Task, both of which make for great workflow. We call them flowing boards and static boards. Let's take a look at static boards first. This is a project I've created that's called Event Planning. You could set up a project like this to organize an award ceremony, a wedding or an exhibition for instance. You can see that I've divided the project board into four sections, location, service, entertainment, and marketing related tasks. I've also defined four tags for this project, order, organize, design, and meeting. The tags indicate what kind of activity a task consists of, which means that I don't always have to say that in the task title. The result is that the whole board looks very neat and clean, and I can easily see all to-dos at a glance. Now, the reason why this type of project board is called static is because I generally don't have to move tasks around. If I have an entertainment-related task, then this section is where I create it, update it, and eventually complete it. Here's another example for a static board, one that might be used by a college student to organize their workload. Their tasks for the current semester are divided into four categories, day-to-day -day homework, reading, writing research papers, and preparing for exams. In the student's case, the tags are used to indicate which class a task is related to. Okay, now let's have a look at some flowing boards. This project is called Social Media Campaigns. Imagine you're working for an online marketing company and you're developing and executing campaigns for various clients. The sections in this board correlate with the different stages a task has to go through, starting with pipeline, where new campaigns are added, for instance, by the team leader. There, the task is picked up by the community manager, who works out the details of the campaign, and then moves the task to the decision section, where a graphic designer will pick it up, create the needed visuals, attach them to the task, and then forward everything to the section for approval. Here, the task waits until the team leader has approved the finished campaign and moves it into the last section, Implementation. Once the campaign has been successfully implemented, the task is completed. As you can see, in this project, tasks start at one end of the board and end up at the other. It's not static, but mirrors the actual workflow of the people who are working on it. That's why we call them flowing boards. Here's another example of a flowing board, which is perfect for software development teams. This one here is set up for a sales team. Note how it mirrors the typical sales funnel, starting with possible leads and ending when the sell has been made. As soon as follow-ups are finished, tasks can be archived and thus removed from the board completely. So, those are the two main types of project boards in MeisterTask, both of which work well for teams as well as individuals. Think about which one better suits your team's needs before you get started. But don't be afraid to modify your workflow as you go along. Thanks for watching, and be on the lookout for more MeisterTest tutorials.